This video is brought to you by the Pro Fight Shop in Hollywood. Radio Raheem with America's favorite trainer, Freddie Roach, uh, at the latest addition to the Wild Card Boxing Gym. Uh, is Cotto the first one to train down here? Yes. Uh, I finished construction a half hour before he showed up. <laughs> I, I was actually getting ready upstairs for him because I didn't think I was going to finish. But we, 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 we got it in and uh, he's been here every day. Now, of course, because of all the fanfare, television exposure, Pacquiao, the place upstairs is jam-packed. And now down here, is this like an exclusive gym just for the superstars? Yeah, basically, you know, I need I need a little separation with the, with the guys with big fights coming up. I have four title fights between now and November, so I'm training Miguel down here, Bruce Pernambukov, uh, Vanus Manarosian, and Pacquiao, I mean, I'm in the Philippines to that. But Pacquiao came and saw the gym. He came by one day to visit Miguel in training. He wanted to watch Miguel train. And he loved the gym also. So it's really good to ask that because it's really hard to close the gym down upstairs, you know, when the big shots come in, when the big guys come in. So this makes it a little bit easier for us. And it's nice, it's nice atmosphere. A little small for me today, but you know, that's, you guys are okay. Any chance that it's so nice we're going to lure Pacquiao back for a few weeks of training? Oh, Pacquiao loves the gym and stuff like this, but the thing is, we can't deal with the jet lag because, you know, we the uh, Philippines are only an hour and a half flight away from uh, Macau. So so why deal with jet lag when you don't have to? So it would be foolish for me to do that, but he will be back here after this fight. He, he, Ameri he's not done with America. I, I, I don't see that coming. Now you just listed off four big title fights you have coming up. Uh, when you got with Miguel Cotto, it's interesting because he was an opponent before. Obviously you were victorious, you and Manny. How did it come about that you ended up training him for this fight? Uh, I get a phone call and uh, I said, oh, you know, uh, friend, this is Miguel Cotto. I said, yeah, sure. Like, you know, I was thinking like, my, I didn't say it. I was just in my mind. And he says, hey, he says, I've got like three, four fights left in me. Can you help me? And I says, yeah. I said, if you, can, if you want to work, I can, I, I can help. So, because I, uh, he's, he's an excellent fighter, he has great credentials, and uh, I, just watching him uh, fight, I can see like he was getting away from what he used to do with the body shots and left legs of the body and so forth. So I just say, if I can bring back the old Miguel Cotto and bring him back and get him a lot of fresh and so forth. See, a lot of these guys, I, I think they don't understand right? when they get older, it's not really that great to work just as hard as you did when you were younger. Sometimes you got to back off a little bit, you know? So instead of running six days, a week, he runs six, three days a week. Now the, the other three days, though, we do cardio machines and so forth, and we don't have the wear and tear of the pound of the hills and the pound of the cement and, and those, those hard runs. You know, it's a there's a fine line there, you know, between uh, being overtrained or undertrained, especially at uh, you know, because he's only 32, but I'm not uh, listening. Age in boxing is not really a number; it's uh, how many fights you've been in, and he's been in a lot of tough fights and so forth. So I didn't think that he needed that grind, you know. So we put him on a better diet. We put him on a better schedule. He's again, he's only two pounds overweight yet last night after training, and this is close as he's ever been. And you know, his activity level is getting better and better. I got guys punching. We did 800 punches in the midst, uh, eight rounds, eight, 800 punches in the midst uh, last week, and then on, on, on sparring day, we're up to four, 400 in sparring. And I just, yeah, I, I, I told him, okay, now I want the, the sparring sessions to get a little higher. I, I, I know it's a lot different than the midst, of course, because fighting opponents, the guy's moving and so forth. But the thing is, 400 is okay, but I know he can do better. I say, yeah, you can, remember, you can do 800 with me. Don't, don't pace yourself. Just go. Now see that and having that kind of experience and knowledge about where fighters are in their career is absolutely priceless. When you hear a guy like Cotto, he's lost a couple of tough fights in a row, you know, Trout, Mayweather, he even talked about retirement. What do you need to do for him mentally to let him know that there's still not just four fights ahead of him, but four good fights, maybe better fights than he's seen in the past? You know, I just, what, what I've done for him so far, just by the, the road work and the conditioning and the, the, the diet and uh, just changing everything in the way, you know, being in the West Coast for the first time ever, training on the West Coast. I think everything we've done so far is you really, really, he is so happy with it. I mean, the thing is, he's never felt this way in the training camp ever, he told me. He's never had this, the, the, the weight's never been this close. Uh, he's never really thrown into boxing, boxing as well as he does. I mean, he's really come a long way since day one till now. I mean, he came in there, you know, 174, I think it was, when he, when he got here. 
you know, he weighed two pounds over yesterday, yesterday after workout. I mean, he's, you know, he's not he's not just making weight for fights like he was doing for a while. What he's doing is he's getting ready for a fight. It made the weights coming off by itself. And that's what the big thing is. A lot of guys just have to maintain the thing about making weight, and that's the biggest problem. You know, you're starving yourself and getting missing meals. Over. So uh, I told him last night, you got to eat more. He says, I'm eating as much as I can. <laughs> so, I, you know, that's a good sign, of course. So the thing is, he's, he's work ethic is great. I love working with him, and uh, I think we're going to see a uh, real good fight in Delvin Rodriguez. And then we, I'm looking for bigger and better things down the road, though. I didn't just take this fight for one fight. You know, it's interesting you say that because in this game, we all know that fighters change trainers sometimes. You know, you never know where the blame lies. He's with Pedro um, Diaz, and now he's with you, and, and you've got a different strategy. But what doesn't usually happen is when the camp breaks up, guys don't immediately go and face their their previous camp members. Obviously, um, what's happened with Pacquiao and Rios, uh, Alex Ariza and you, how does Alex Ariza end up in the Rio's camp, and how do you feel about that? Well, you know, best of luck to him. Um, you know, Chavez fired him for some reason. I, uh, you know, I wasn't there. I'm not training Chavez anymore. But uh, you know, uh, Manny Pacquiao. I, I wanted Manny to go back to the old ways, to, uh, to uh, stretching himself and just getting ready to just, let's go back to the old days. Because you know, uh, I didn't think, didn't think that Manny, Manny really needed a strength and conditioning coach because he, they wouldn't do. They really didn't do nothing with him anyway. I mean, Manny's his own machine. Manny would tell everybody. I'm gonna run the hills today. You know, he, he has his own schedule. So, and then why Chavez fired him, I have no idea. But you know, but the thing is, um, I think straight the kids go. Sometimes they're overrated. And uh, thing is, uh, I, I I felt that there was no need for it. And uh, so I talked. I had to talk with Manny, and Manny agreed with me, and that was it. Uh, you know, he's, we, we, then he goes work with Brendan Rios. I, I I wish the best luck. To, I, I have I have no problem with him. Uh, uh, you know, he needs to pay the bills too. Right. No one would begrudge him for continuing his career, but to immediately then face Manny Pacquiao, who gave him his start, who gave him his, not his start, but at least made him a star as you did. Is there any sense of betrayal there? Any sense of treachery? Well, you know, the thing is, um, all you gotta do is ask my fighters. Is my heart still in it? Just ask Miguel, Manny, Luslan, ask them and they'll give you the right answer. You know? And the thing is, all this stuff on Facebook, these guys, they spend their, their whole day like they, they must have no lives at all. Because all, all I hear about is what they say about me on that Twitter and stuff like this, you know. Uh, but I don't reach Twitter, so I don't really care. <laughs> Now, there's a, there was a, a report that went out that disturbed everybody for a few days that Manny had injured himself playing basketball. Well, that's always a possibility in basketball. That's why we have a rule. He can't wait, but he can't play four weeks before the fight. But we're, four, we're more than four weeks out right now, so he didn't break the rule. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is that, that is the danger of playing basketball. But he, lo he loves the sport. And uh, I'm happy to see him get back at it because he gave that up for a while. And I thought that was one of the things he shouldn't have gave up because I like the sprints of the world. The, the, the running and so forth and he loves the game so he, th this thing won't affect the fight in any way you don't think it'll affect the training camp the injury will be healed by then from what I from what I'm told it's just very very minor injury and then he's, he'll be fine by, by the time I get there sparring starts and we go back we then basketball stops and we, we go to work thank you Freddie Radio Raheem with Freddie Roach at the new wildcard boxing gym